So it was a quiet Sunday afternoon, and the father decided to seize the opportunity to have a meaningful conversation with his teenage son about the importance of a good education. As they sat together in the living room, the father began to explain how a college degree could significantly impact his son's future and open doors to various opportunities. Curious and eager to understand, the son asked, Dad, what's the difference between a man with a college degree and a man without? The father, pleased to see his son's interest, replied, Well, son, both men can perform the same job, but the outcome will vary depending on whether or not you have a college degree. How so? inquired the son, intrigued by his father's statement. You see, the father explained, if you were to rob a man without a college degree, you'd be prosecuted as a criminal and sent to jail. And what if I rob a man after I've received a college degree? The son asked, trying to grasp the point his father was making. The father smiled and responded, In that case, they'll address you as a special agent of the tax service. <laughs> a male whale and a female whale were swimming off the coast of Japan when they noticed a whaling ship. The male whale recognized it as the same ship that had harpooned his father many years earlier. He said to the female whale, let's both swim under the ship and blow out of our air holes at the same time and it should cause the ship to turn over and sink. They tried it and sure enough, the ship turned over and quickly sank. Soon, however, the whales realized the sailors had jumped overboard and were swimming to the safety of shore. The male was enraged that they were going to get away and told the female, let's swim after them and gobble them up before they reach the shore. At this point, he realized the female was becoming reluctant to follow him. Look, she said, I went along with the blowjob, but I absolutely refused to swallow the semen. <laughs> so on a bright Saturday morning, Margie and Sharon, two close friends, decided to meet at their favorite coffee shop to catch up and chat about life. As they sipped their coffees, the conversation shifted towards their love lives. Margie sighed and said, I don't know what to do. I'm too shy to ask for it, and he doesn't initiate enough. Sharon, having experienced a similar issue in the past, decided to share her secret technique with Margie. Well, she said, I have a surefire way to spark my husband's interest. Morgie's eyes widened and she leaned in, eager to hear the details. Oh, do tell, she implored. With a sly smirk, Sharon revealed, when we're sitting together, I just slowly slide my hand down his pants and say, my, aren't you cold in there? Could use some heating up. It works every time. Margie laughed and said, you know what, maybe I'll give that a try. A few days later, the friends met up again. This time, however, Margie was in a foul mood. You almost got me divorced. She snapped at Sharon, who was astounded by her friend's claim. What, how, she asked. Genuinely perplexed, Margie recounted her experience. I did exactly what you told me. I sat next to my husband, slid my hand down his pants, but it wasn't cold. There was already hot. Sharon, still confused, asked, So what's the problem? Frustrated, Margie continued, I asked my husband why the inside of his pants was hot and not cold like your husband, Sharon. <laughs> so Jeff and his girlfriend, Jenny, were a young and adventurous couple always seeking excitement and new experiences. One day, they were watching a movie about a daring heist, and then idea struck them, why not try their hand at bank robbery? They devised a detailed plan that assigned Jenny the responsibility of handling the actual robberies at gunpoint inside the banks, while Jeff would wait outside 
as the getaway driver. Initially, their escapades proved successful. They pulled off a series of heists that grabbed the attention of the media and even earned them a folk hero status. However, as with most crime sprees, their luck eventually ran out and they found themselves caught and facing trial. The judge sentenced Jenny to 10 years in prison while Jeff received a two-year sentence. Upon arrival at their respective prisons, they discovered the clerical error had been made. Jeff was now slated to serve 10 years, while Jenny would only serve two. Despite Jenny's insistence on rectifying the situation, Jeff persuaded her to keep quiet about the mix-up. After serving her two-year sentence, Jenny was released and remained loyal to Jeff. She visited him every month and they exchanged heartfelt letters and phone calls throughout the remainder of his 10-year sentence. Once Jeff finally completed his time, the couple reunited, got married and moved to a different state to start fresh, leaving their criminal past behind. Together, they built a family filled with children and grandchildren, living a life full of love and happiness. As they grew old together, their bond only strengthened. On their 50th wedding anniversary, they hosted a grand party attended by their entire family and friends. The celebration was filled with laughter, stories, and reminiscing about their journey together. As the evening progressed, the conversation shifted towards the secrets of a long-lasting and happy marriage. One of the guests, intrigued by their unique love story, asked Jenny why she decided to stand by Jeff during his time in prison, despite the numerous hardships they faced. With a loving smile, Jenny looked at her husband and replied, Well, you know, you have found the one when you finish each other's sentences. <laughs> a woman, cranky because her husband was late coming home again, decided to leave a note saying, I've had enough and have left you. Don't bother coming after me. Then she hid under the bed to see his reaction. After a short while, the husband comes home and she could hear him in the kitchen before he comes into the bedroom. She could see him walk towards the dresser and pick up the note. After a few minutes, he wrote something on it before picking up the phone and calling someone. She's finally gone. Yeah, I know, about bloody time. I'm coming to see you. Put on that sexy French nighty. I love you. Can't wait to see you. We'll do all the naughty things you like. He hung up, grabbed his keys, and left. She heard the car drive off as she came out from under the bed. Seething with rage and with tears in her eyes, she grabbed the note to see what he wrote. I can see your feet. We're out of bread. Be back in five minutes. <laughs> My friends, if you want to watch other funny jokes, subscribe to the channel.